Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of December 2nd this time around. So uh, last week, we focused on the morning sky. We said, if you look at the stuff in the west, that's the stuff that's been up all night. You could have been watching it. The stuff in the east is just rising in the morning sky. Let's look at the evening sky this week. And let's start with Venus. Venus, you go out at dark. And Venus is the big bright object in the in the southwest that you, you can't miss out there. Uh, I shouldn't say that, but but it's it's big and bright, and it's the biggest brightest star-like thing that's out there on the evening of the fourth. So it, we're talking about evening sky now because this will all all have set here shortly after dark on the evening of the fourth. The moon is going to be just a little bit less than 15% full, a beautiful crescent moon, and it's going to be sitting right below Venus, about three moon diameters below Venus, uh, a couple of finger widths below Venus, if you hold that out at arm's length. Uh, should be a beautiful pairing of the crescent moon with Venus right above it. Worth getting out uh, right, after, right after dark, uh, for an hour or two after dark on the 4th to see that. Two nights later, on the evening of the 6th, uh, what we're looking at, uh, Venus will have moved, mo mo and so Venus is in, in prograde motion. It's moving east against the background stars. The moon will have moved out of the way a good ways, and Venus will be sitting, it will have tracked across, it'll be sitting less than one degree below a very nice globular star cluster, M75. Remember, we've talked about globular star clusters before. Globular star clusters are these, these groups uh, half a million stars uh, that live in a halo. They orbit around the center of our galaxy. And so we, they live outside the main part of the galaxy in this big cloud and orbit around the center of the galaxy. We have to look toward the center of the galaxy to see them. M75 is a good example of one. If you've got binoculars and it's a good dark sky, you can probably see the fuzzy patch that's right above Venus. If you've got a small telescope, start at Venus and then track just a little bit north of Venus uh, maybe back a little bit to the west, but it's probably almost, if you've got a low-power field of view, eyepiece, uh, it'll be in the same field of view as Venus there. Now, just south of Venus, 1.1 uh, degrees or so, 1 and a tenth degrees, uh, south and to the east of Venus is Pluto. Uh, so Venus is passing right by Pluto uh, this week, uh, as, as it's shooting between M75 and Pluto on the 6th. Uh, Hard to see. <laughs> you need a pretty big telescope to actually even see Pluto. If you've got a, a backyard telescope of any kind that you can take, and a camera that you can take a picture with through the telescope, uh, you should be able to see Pluto there. And you take a picture on a couple consecutive nights and watch Venus tracking one way against the background stars. Uh, Pluto's trying to track with it, but not keeping up. So they'll, they'll, they look like they're separating this way, uh, but but but. Pluto's not able to keep up with Venus. Pluto will move very, very slightly from night to night. This same night on the 6th, the moon will have filled out to about a third full. So we've got a third full moon uh, starting to get a nice crescent, uh, full crescent shape. It's going to be sitting in Capricornus, and it's got, it's got like a halo or, or horns. It's got two little dots of stars right above it. Less than two degrees above the moon will be Deneb al Gedi, uh, third magnitude star, and Nashira a 3.7 magnitude star. Both fine stars. should be able to see them uh, with your naked eye. So you see these two dots sitting right above the moon. Uh, good to get out. Look, now if you drop six and a half degrees, uh, a half a fist width, a little more, two-thirds of a fist width held out at arm's length uh, below the moon. If you go straight south of the moon on this night of the 6th, you'll find another good example of a globular star cluster, M30. Get your binoculars out. See if you can see that uh, with your binoculars or a small telescope, just start tracking straight south from the moon, and you run into yet another example of a good globular star cluster. The next night, on the 7th, uh, Venus has moved over to be directly above Pluto, and it's less than one degree. So, so less than one finger width at arm's length is separating Venus and Pluto on this night. Uh, so, so Venus is, is, is passing Pluto, headed out that direction. The moon is about 40 to 45 percent full, and it sits about six degrees to the mostly to the west uh, of Saturn. So, so five or six degrees to the west of Saturn. Saturn, Saturn, we've been for a long time now. As we've caught up and passed Saturn, Saturn has looked like it's going backwards against the back uh, the background stars. We call that retrograde motion. Uh, for now, a little while, we didn't mark the change. 
but for a little while Saturn is in prograde motion. It's sitting in an Aquarius, and we've been marking its pro progress against stars in Aquarius. And as it stops, as, as it's going west against the background star, stars and turns around and starts to go back to the east against the background stars, it's moving very slowly, so it hasn't been moving much at all against the background stars in Aquarius there. The next night on the 8th, uh, the moon will be 50-55% full, so we've got a half full moon on this night. And it has moved to the other side of Saturn, so you'll see it now to the east of Saturn, uh, about 8 degrees is separating uh, Saturn and the moon on that night. Um, on December 6th back here, Mars will have gone into retrograde motion as we catch up and pass Mars. We've been tracking Mars as it's headed toward the Beehive Cluster in Cancer, getting closer, closer, closer. It's really close to it all week because it too is barely moving this week as it turns around and changes direction against the background star. So it enters retrograde motion during this week. Now, above Saturn uh, is the great square of Pegasus, our most iconic marker of a fall sky. So you go out, if you find Saturn, you certainly can find Saturn when the moon is near it. Uh, one night before this on the 6th, the moon would be another 10, 15 degrees out this direction. So if you look, you find the moon on the 5th or the 6th and you see a bright yellowish star off to the east of the moon. That's Saturn. Uh, and, and if you, so you can find Saturn out there. Saturn sits right below the bottom right corner of the great square of Pegasus. So we've got this great square of Pegasus like this. The top left corner of the great square of Pegasus is Alpharats. And Alpharats has gone back and forth a little bit between being in Pegasus, the winged horse, and being in Andromeda. And we counted among the, the great square stars in Pegasus, but it is actually the brightest star in Andromeda. And Andromeda is this V of stars that moves up this direction. And we look at Andromeda this time every year. We have just passed Thanksgiving here in, in the United States. And we think of this as a cornucopia, uh, that shape, that nice V shape opening up broadly out at the top. So we got that cornucopia that we sometimes associate as imagery with uh, Thanksgiving. So we like to go look at Andromeda. We think about different things in Andromeda. Uh, but what we're going to do this time is we're just going to step out one step, two steps in this ladder, this opening of the V. We're stepping out. You go from the bottom to the top to the next step up, that same distance up, and you've got M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And the Andromeda Galaxy is our nearest neighbor, full-size galaxy, big galaxy, big bright splotch on the sky. Don't, if you've got dark skies, you don't need binoculars, you don't need a telescope. It looks like a thumbprint, a phosphorescent thumbprint on the sky. Uh, and it's fun to look at and fun to think about that that's our nearest neighbor. That's the, you know, what is that, 300 billion stars you're looking at right there is that little splash of light, that little paintbrush swash of light right there. Uh, so, so that's great. Back to Alpharets. Alpharets, the, all the stars of the Great Square Pegasus are bright. A 2.1 magnitude star. It, it is a spectroscopic binary star, which means that we can tell it's a binary star by the fact that there's two sets of spectral lines in there. Uh, you get lines in the spectrum. You take the spectrum of a star, you take the, the light of the star and break it up into the component colors as if you, you passed it through a uh, a uh, prism, okay? Uh, you, you, you need a little more than a prism, but uh, you need some kind of diffraction gradient to do this. But, but, but if you pass white light through a prism, rain, you get the rainbow that comes out the other side. And in there, there's, there's dark lines uh, where, where electrons in atoms in the outer layer of the star are making transitions upward as light, as light comes from below. And, and you see a darker, darker spots associated with the different atoms in there. And those dark lines... They're Doppler shifted. When one star is moving towards you, you get a, a blue shift. And so the wavelength of the light gets shorter. The line moves bluer. When it's moving away from you, you get a red shift. The line gets longer. And so in the spectroscopic binaries, if you made a graph of the wavelength uh, versus time, one would be doing this, uh, bluer, redder, bluer, redder. And the other would be doing exactly the opposite. Redder, bluer. So you see these two lines walking back and forth in this rainbow with the dark lines on top of it. That's a spectroscopic binary. Alpha Rats is a great example of a spectroscopic binary. 90, 97 day period. Uh, you don't see the individual stars. You just see in the spectrum of the stars uh, what's going on there. Uh, this name, Alpha Rats, we've said this many times before, many, many times before, uh, that Al is an is Arabic word for the. And so it's, this is this. Is a, is, comes to us from the Arabic, and we look at uh, we look at Al, we look at the star names uh, by Alan. And we have the, I have the book out here. 
I don't see the book uh, readily available. Uh, so that's where we get, Alan's star names is where we get the names of these stars, the histories. Al-Sarat Al-Faras is an old name. You see Al-Faraz right in there. Uh, would be the old name for this, which would be Horse's Head, the head of the horse uh, that we would see along there. A uh, newer name would be associated, would be more Al-Ras al mara al Masasala, uh, the head of the woman in chains. And so this is recognition of the Greek story where Pegasus, the winged horse, that's Andromeda, uh, the woman in chains riding on the horse. So you see both of these uh, parts of the story in there. Uh, uh, Perseus would have gone to ride Pegasus to save, uh, to save Andromeda there uh, in, this, in this story. And so that's what we see. This is what we got for you. Go and enjoy the Great Square of Pegasus. Uh, check out Alpha Rats. Check out M31. And be sure to check out Venus in the evening sky and Saturn and the moon passing through there. Uh, we got great stuff this week. As always, everybody, thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great week ahead.